what I do look for, like what are some of the really strong points that you would want to see from a teacher? And in this video, I'm going to share uh, definitely not an exhaustive or conclusive list, but things that I think are really important. And first and foremost, I think that when we're looking for a teacher, and this to me is first, it's really beautiful to see somebody who is continuing to grow in their own practice, right? Who is constantly learning about the practice themselves, who is constantly bringing that knowledge back to their students. So that might mean ongoing revisions of their courses for free, mind you, not, you know, this year I developed a new course and now I'm going to pay to give you another cert or you can pay me to get another certification and so on or some upgrade master level in the Reiki world or whatever it might be. I mean, here's how my thinking as a Reiki teacher has evolved. I'm going to put it in a course video because you are already in my course. You get that understanding for free for life. That's part of doing your work, honestly, in my opinion, right? So look to see if the teacher is constantly growing and evolving their own practice, right? It's to me, it's super important because that means that the practice to them, to the teacher is personally important enough to invest their own time outside of their own work, right? That time is very precious. My spare time is very precious outside of my work with Roots of Life, uh, dot org and all of the trainings that I do and working with my clients and so on. So if I choose to use that free time to help further my practice of Reiki, well, it obviously means that I really love Reiki, which I do, right? I really love the practice. So to me, that's super important. It's very valuable to see in a teacher. And building on that then is another component that I look for in the Reiki world and in some ways in the yogic world and meditation and so on. But in Reiki, I think it's much easier to establish is the brevity of lineage, right? And what do I mean by that? To me, I would want to seek out a teacher that is as close to the source as absolutely possible within the Reiki world. It is, first and foremost, it is absolutely no criticism whatsoever to a teacher whose lineage is not close at all to Usui Sensei, right? For Usui, Sei, Usui Reiki Ryoho. That's not what I mean by, by any means whatsoever. I want to be clear on that. What I do mean, though, is every step away from the roots is an opportunity for the practice to get further diluted and modified and exchanged or swapped in with other beliefs of the teachers and so on. So if you're 30 people removed from Usui Sensei, you're likely going to be getting a wildly different course than if you were, you know, three or four or five, you know, teachers away from Usui Sensei. And the reason I'm saying that as a continuation into other realms of holistic wellness and why it's a little bit more difficult to track <laughs> is because I see this all the time. I really don't think I've ever met a Tai Chi, Qigong, yoga, uh, a yogi, or meditation teacher who has not all trained and practiced under like the last living person of that lineage and it was the best thing and so on and so forth. Okay, maybe I'm just really fortunate in the people that I meet, doubtful, or maybe it's that these stories of teacher to student relationships are really inflated and there's no way to actually verify these types of things, right? The Reiki world is a lot newer in many ways hundred years as of this year of the practice of Usui Reiki Ryoho. So we can trace lineage very, very effectively, right? So for instance, my lineage, I'm three teachers removed from Usui Sensei, and that can be verified factually. That's not hearsay and conjecture, okay? When I hear that there's somebody in the yogic world who is, you know, three teachers underneath this person who learned here at some ashram there and did this. Well, maybe, maybe that's true. I don't know. Right. And so it's just an opportunity for a lot of belief and, and story to get involved here. If we go back to the roots as closely as we can, the quality of the teaching should increase by definition, right? If the teacher is humble, if the teacher is honest and staying committed to their own practice, mind you. So, that's another thing that I'd really look out for is the brevity of lineage, okay? 
I would also be looking out for, and this is also really important, for verified ongoing support from your teacher, which means when you have questions or when you need guidance or when you, you know, get to a fork in your road or something new comes up in your own practice and you're not sure how to make a decision here, you need help, you need guidance, is your teacher accessible to you? I hear all too often, sadly, that teachers just get the money, give the course, give the certificate, and then they're gone. There's no longer any support. Most likely that resonates with some of you watching this video. I'm sure it does. That is unfortunate to me. So I would urge you when you are looking for a new teacher to find teachers that plainly express to all of their students that support is included and ongoing, right? For instance, I offer that. And I offer that because I'm constantly learning. I'm constantly growing in my own practice, right? And so if you are my student and I continue to grow, then how would it be honest of me to not help you continue to grow as well, right? That doesn't mean you have to adhere to what I'm saying or you have to resonate with what I'm learning and so on and so forth. But if I don't share that to you, then you don't have an opportunity to potentially grow from the things that I'm learning. Again, we're all on our own path. We're all on our own journey with Reiki or with holistic wellness and a journey inward, right? So you are on, on your own journey. My job as a teacher is to help as many people as I can and support them on that journey, right? And it's the exact same thing for me. I'm a student to my teacher and I'm constantly getting support and guidance and encouragement to go inward and make new connections. And I'm a student of many of my teachers, people that I converse with, that I respect dearly in the, in the field of Reiki and martial arts and holistic wellness and so on. All of those things are a part of me doing my work honestly and a commitment to my practice so that I can share it with my students. It's ongoing, it's support, right? For all of our journeys. Because if one suffers, we all suffer. If one moves closer towards less suffering, we all move closer towards less suffering, right? So seek that out. I mean, look for that in your teachers, right? I think that's super important anyways, and I think, I hope that that resonates with you. And the last thing that I would be looking for, of course, is the humility of the teacher. You know, this can come off in so many different forms and characteristics. Um, from the person's persona, to their belief about themselves, to their belief of the practice, to their belief of their own lineage. And essentially what I'm saying here is, does it appear that the teacher is walking alongside of you or does it always appear that the teacher needs to be walking in front of you, right? To me, it's really important to find somebody who is walking alongside of you. You are walking your journey on your footsteps, in your shoes, right? You are taking your path inward to yourself, right? How can I assist you on your path if I walk in front of you? That would insinuate that I know what your path is. That doesn't make sense. That's egotistical. I can only assist my students if I walk alongside of them, you know, step by step. So that when they have a question, then I can do my best to give my ideas on what their question might be. And there's going to be little light bulbs that click in that. But see, it's my interpretation of their journey. So I can't be fully in that journey because everybody's on their own path. So the only thing that I can do is be there to help and be as a supportive figure as they take each and every step forward on their own journey, right? You know, so a lot of times teachers may come across with a persona of, you know, They've discovered something, they're more powerful, they've got all these things, all these adjectives and, and, and beliefs about themselves. To me, and what resonates strongly with me is not a teacher who does that, but a teacher who is gonna walk alongside you, not in front of you, right? So, you know, for me, those are kind of the four big uh, points that I look for in teachers. And they are the points that I look for when I start my work and when I want to go on and learn something else, especially in the holistic world, right? In the world of holistic wellness or mindfulness, meditation, yoga, whatever it might be, right? All of those things going inward is what I would hope 
that I can see being expressed outwardly from my teachers. And what I mean by going inward is remember everything that you are learning is ultimately a journey into yourself, right? So how is that journey into yourself going to be better facilitated? Is it going to be facilitated by somebody who is being guided by their ego, who doesn't offer ongoing support, who believes that they've learned everything about their own practice and that's it, and they don't want to you know, continue to grow, and that is you know, maybe so far away from the roots of their own practice that they believe that they've discovered their own practice by themselves? Or is it going to be better served by somebody who walks alongside of you that offers ongoing support that is close enough to the roots of the practice that they can remember and teach honestly the practice as it was originally taught, right? And is that individual teacher also continuing their own growth? Two vastly juxtaposing worlds here, right? And in my opinion, it seems pretty clear the kind of points that I would be looking for for a teacher because that's going to help me go in to myself on my journey that much more efficiently, with that much more courage, that much more surrendering, and that much more willingness to take one more step on my own journey. So I hope you've enjoyed my thoughts here on, you know, kind of what to look out for in a teacher or kind of the strong points when you're looking for a potential teacher. I'd love to know what you thought about it. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and I would look forward to reading them. If you like the content of this video, I really am grateful for any support of the channel with a subscription. Each and every Sunday, I produce and release new videos for the channel, focusing on Reiki, holistic wellness, and holistic health. So thank you so much, everybody, for your time. I hope you found this video to be beneficial to yourself and to your practice. As always, be well and in gosh out to all.